right. The dissatisfactions with life in the new world are declared systematically and with interesting stylistic and rhythmic effects in Negus. It's on the screen for you to see the visual effects as you listen to the sounds. I can't go into it because we're running out of time. In the story of the poems in Rites of Passage, the uprooted homeless and restless islanders go into exile. The poem calls them New World Mariners and they appear in many parts of the book. The section called The Emigrants may serve as an example. But I want to draw to a close now by noticing two items. The first is to emphasize the political dimension of Braffitt works. In the poem Leopard, he came, comes very close to advocating violence in the manner of Franz Fanon. The exiles who have suffered in the foreign countries decide to return to the island after their bitter experience. And in all dreams, all destinations, the figure of the poet returns to find Jack Kennedy invading Cuba, black riots in Aruba, and all kinds of confusion and dislocation in the island. So the return after exile is still bitter. And as I said before, after that exile, we come to the spiritual return to Africa. My second item might lead into controversy, though it shouldn't. I have referred already to Safo Saki's weary way of seeing things. I've, I've referred to the poem Clock that registered the grounding in his dark. I want now to turn to a poem that has been celebrated for its language and for its portraying of women and its portrayal of the trials that ordinary people face. I'm referring to the dust, the dust. And if you can just look at that, I would like to close with a comment on it. If we look at this section, here is get up. Here is get up, walk about. Praise God that your body ain't turned into stone and that your body is still big, that you got a good voice that can shout for heaven to hear. You ain't got nothing to fear from no man. You just come to the shop, stop, talk a little bit, get dispatched and go home. You still got a back that can dig in the fields and hoe and pull up the weeds from the teeny brown square that you're calling your own. You ain't sick and your children strong. Every day you see the sun rise, the sun set. God sent every month a new moon. And this is the bit. Dry season follow wet season again. And the green crop follow the rain. Um, I'm being blocked from seeing it. Dry season follow wet season, and the green crop follow the rain. And then suddenly, so without rhyme, without reason, the crop started to die. 
you can't even see the sun in the sky. And suddenly so, without rhyme, without reason, all your hope gone, everything looked like it coming out wrong. Why is this? What it mean? I would like to offer that the Kamau who writes of the weary way of saying things and about the pounding in our dark is a poet deeply stirred by the mystery of the universe, the mystery of the drumming heart and the enigma of history as well as the enigma in human affairs. Why is that? What it means? It is this incomprehensibility that leads to his heroic affirmations and his willingness to make more and more incisions in a quest for wholeness and understanding in a broken world. Dry season follow wet season again and the green crop follow the rain and then suddenly so without rhyme without reason the crops start to die you can't even see the sun in the sky and suddenly so without rhyme without reason all your hope gone everything looked like it's coming out wrong why is that what it means. I continue to think of Kamau as Safu Saki, who had a weary way of saying what was true. Thank you.